Today's speaker is Bev Jones from the University of Sheffield. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, for those who haven't joined our drop-in sessions, um, these are very informal sessions where we have a speaker, very kindly, one of our subscribers, talking about research data management topic or DMP online and their institution. Normally the topic choice is very free, uh, but it's, it's a nice chat for the community. So uh, Beth will be starting and then we will open um, the floor uh, for some questions uh, from you. Hopefully there will be some. Um, and then we'll just give you a few updates, but it might just be via sharing the links through the chat um, if we do the questions and answers for longer, because um, the most recent sessions were very successful. Um, so we, we took more time uh, with the speaker rather than us chatting, which is which is always great and um, because we want the community to speak. Um, but I'll just introduce Beth. Um, and after I do that, I'll, I'll just um, mute myself. So um, after a varied career, mainly in electronics engineering, but also encompassing an art college, a museum and bookie, um, Beth came into li librarianship quite late. She was a cataloger at the University of Lincoln and therefore this was the right uh, place for her to launch the publication repository. Uh, Beth was heavily involved in the open access community through, is it right if I say O U, sorry, U K C O R R and JISC? Yes. And compiled, yes, thank you. And compiled two ref submissions, but also developed a data policy through a JISC project called Orbital. Um, Beth since moved to RDM roles, first at Warwick and now Sheffield where she enjoys training and advocacy and support DMP online and ORD a fixture repository. So and uh, this is a little background info about Beth and Beth you can you can start now. <clears throat> okay, good morning everybody. Um I, we want uh, we thought we'd take the opportunity to tell you about our year at Sheffield. Um the um uh, the University of Sheffield uh, is a large research intensive university founded in 1905, five faculties, 50 departments, four flagship institutes, 22 cross cutting research centres and a medical school. Um, and we're one of the top seven universities in the UK for postgrad enrolment. Um, a third of our students are postgraduates. So there's a strong research culture at the university. <clears throat> and this quote on your screen is from our uh, newly appointed research practice lead, Dr. Tom. Stafford and it's uh, it's also indicative of our um, culture that we have uh, a research practice lead. Um, so and I can't move that's it. Um, so this is us within the library, the scholarly communications team in the University of Sheffield Library has been supporting research data for data management for several years but in the summer of 2019 we had a new challenge because um, we got a mandate for all new postgrads to create a, a data management plan for their research project and submit it as part of their confirmation review at the end of the first year um, so it was this was welcome a welcome development um, reinforcing our work with assisting and encouraging Sheffield researchers in their data management strategies and practices. Um, but we had some work to do, obviously. So uh, with research data management becoming a bigger priority and we had a, 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 a recovering from a brief staffing hiatus, we had a new team, small team, uh, re-established to provide support for the university students and staff. And we set out the year by meeting as many people as possible. So we met with uh, faculty staff to tell them about the new DMP mandate and the support the team could offer. Uh, we introduced the library's faculty engagement team to the newly customised um, uh, DMP online. That's our DMP online. It's blue um, so that uh, they were familiar with it and could help promote it better and our help better and we kept the highest possible profile during induction so we set about 
revamping our training to include um, uh, the cross-faculty cross doctoral development program sessions, uh, tailored de de departmental workshops, uh, all of them to cover both managing research data and writing a data management plan, uh, working on the assumption we'd only get one opportunity to get our message across to, P to PGRs. So we used the first part of the session to explore all the data management issues, storage, security, archiving and sharing. And while these were still fresh in their minds, uh, we workshopped and encouraged them to start writing their data management plans. Um, and students were keen to start and they found DMP Online very straightforward to use. Uh, we also organised group training and advice sessions for supervisors uh, because obviously the mandate was new for them as well and they seemed to appreciate our help and reassurance. And for researchers with specific queries, we also ran advice sessions. And as a backup to this, we produced several short videos covering the basics of RDM and DMP online and embedded them as part of our comprehensive training web page. And the, um, the, fee the feedback we got was that the training was very popular uh, and attendance was very high. Uh, just to put this in, in context, over the year, our DDP sessions reached more PGRs than all of the other library sessions combined. Um, and they were lively sessions. We got lots of people. Um, and we previously only run these sessions in the first semester. Uh, but it became obvious that the need for RDM training was going to continue through the year. Uh, and we also realised that we need to run, have two people running the sessions um, because we, we had a lot of interaction with the students. So we included the wider scholarly comms team in this uh, as they were very keen to be involved. But this proved particularly useful later on in the year. And of course, everything changed in March. Um, uh, the university library closed and we all moved to working from home. We had a longer Easter holiday and um, uh, we paused our training briefly and transformed it online. Uh, now, because we'd got the videos, uh, this was a little bit easier and we and we made we, we took the material from these and from our existing presentations to create new training sessions using Blackboard Collaborate. Um, and having two members of staff worked really well here because we got other people familiar with it. And it meant that we could keep making these sessions interactive using the chat. And students seemed to be quite happy to participate. And we tried to run virtual versions of our usual group activities. Uh, and then we, uh, we moved our advice sessions online. We used Google Meet, which made it easier to give the time and attention we needed for individual students. So as a measure of how that went, this is the usage of DMP online, which is a, an idea of, gives an idea of the engagement we've had and the increase. You can see that we had a little bit of a dip in April and we thought maybe we'd got a, a lockdown lull. Um, but it turns out looking back, I've included um, uh, earlier data uh, so you can see that we've got exactly the same seasonal variation as we have every year. Um, it's just higher. So that was quite pleasing. Really, the, the move to online was very straightforward. Um, and we now, Sheffield researchers now create at least 50 plans every month, sometimes 100. And of course, because they, the PGRs had a September deadline for confirmation reviews, um, the summer months were particularly busy. Um, and the customised resource has been proved really valuable for researchers and the RDM team. Um, and it's enabled us to provide a, to offer a range of templates and guidance tailored to our requirements. Uh, and this is our this is a year's slides, a, a year's templates, a year's plans by template. <clears throat> and I've coloured coded them so you can see that the blue ones are uh, any that the um we've um created or customized ourselves the green ones are funder templates and the yellow ones are um are others which turned out to be all dcc um 
so uh, the the systems prove very flexible and it's what we've what we've done is tried to find templates that were already being used and bring um uh that uh that guidance in um so people were familiar with uh, so in the case of the faculty of uh, medicine dentistry and health we had a there was a template they were already using and we transplanted it straight into dmp online um, the other one which we had quite a lot of usage of is the paper-based research one uh, because we find that the uh, arts and humanities students and researchers uh, their needs aren't always straightforward and you know, the requirement for data management plans is relatively new for them so we've we've created a, a sort of mirror of our postgraduate template but um, a little bit more supportive of their requirements um, and a lot of our researchers, both students and staff, take advantage of the option to request library feedback on their plan. And in the last year, we had about 800 completed plans in DMP online, and 200 of these were directly referred to us. And this proportion is rising. There's a caveat that it is something we find quite difficult to measure. Um, <clears throat> we know we get um, plans outside DMP online referred to us as well, and that's even more difficult to count. Um, and we, we've tried to make this like a conversation with researchers. So we, um, we try to respond very quickly. So we normally, we've got to have a KPI of three days, but we normally respond within a day or two. Um, and in order to, because we're a small team, and we're learning a lot. We've learned a lot this year. So we've built up a, a library of comments structured around the PGR template, which address common issues that we that we find in plans. And we don't just cut and paste, but we do, it does inform the questions that we that we use. And I think that it, it helps us be quicker, but I, we hope that it will be a, a useful resource for future members of the RDM team who will never have to start as far back as we did. And where capacity allows, we also employ dual review. So we like to um, look at each other's <clears throat> um, comments and, and add to them so that we get a, a more consistent, more comprehensive response. And in the first full year of the mandate, it was a busy year and it was, it was great. We talked to um, over 600 researchers, supervisors, support staff, either face-to-face -face or in sessions online, and we cascaded to many more of them. Um, and as well as the, there being a visible increase in the number and quality of DMPs that we see, um, our students tell us that the training is valuable. I mean, the feedback looks good. 96% of attendees would recommend the sessions and rate the content good or very good, but they they also tell us that they enjoy it and find it helpful. Uh, but we're not resting on our laurels. We've just updated our <clears throat> all of our visual resources for accessibility. And um, so we're going to, um, uh, and we're, we're reviewing all our slides and um, hoping to resume online training um, uh, as soon as possible, very soon. Um, and we have some developments in the future. We're working with research services to improve the connection between ethics and data management planning. And we've got that passed um, uh, the relevant committee just now. Thank you, Rosie. So we're expecting more engagement with research staff in the coming months, and we need to make that seamless. So we're hoping to use conditional questions to streamline that. Um, and we're also hoping to devote more time this year to promoting and enabling open research. And because we're hoping that we we hope that our training is a sort of trickle up, we, we're gathering information from publication behaviour, which obviously we don't like to talk about compliance, but publication behaviour and um, looking at finding ways to feed that into the early stages of research by by informing our training and in improve for future practice. Um, so we've got a new set of postgrad students and um, we're expecting to be busier than ever. And it's uh, um, uh, another another challenging year, I hope. Thank you. Uh, ask me a question. 
Thank you very much, Beth. Uh, very informative and great to see such a increase in the numbers yeah, over there. It's been a busy year. Seems yeah. like. <laughs> Um, so we are we are open for questions. So feel free to either unmute yourself or you can type your question in the in the chat. Well, tell me how different your year has been. Yeah, how, how are other people experiencing um, research development support from home? Don't need to be shy. <laughs> You're all very quiet. <laughs> yeah, it feels like. Um, no worries. Like, uh, if you if you can think of um, some further comments or you have some questions, you can always unmute yourself or or just type it. I'm, I'm gonna give you just a few more seconds before we move on, but. Bev, again, thank you so much for your presentation. And it seems like it's been just such a busy year for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, um, but it's it's lovely because all of the things that we we've always, you know, that that, that had been organised and planned and suddenly happened. Yeah, so. which is fantastic. And you were, which is great, you were having some material to build on this year as well, which I think yeah. was perhaps really quite. Yes. Yes, we learned a lot. Yeah. Um, so we received uh, now two comments. I'll just read them out to you. Uh, first from Jenny. Um, she's saying, it's not a question, but I really like the idea of doing a demo with college lives and li librarians. I'll be doing yeah. this. Um, yeah, they, they brought a lot. Yeah. Um, another one from Dan Crane. Hi, Beth. Uh, that was great. Thanks. I'm afraid I missed the start. RDMP's mandate at Sheffield. Only yes, uh, they're mandated. Um, they're mandated for PGRs, basically, basically doctoral students. Um, we don't turn anyone away. We have had a few master's students and one or two um, uh, bachelor's level, but. Um, uh, the uh, it's the it, it's the the doctors who have to do it mm -hmm. um another question from kirsten um thank you for the presentation does the mandatory dmp requirement apply to all qualification levels also to bachelors and masters yeah we have had we have had quite a lot of interest from from masters students um, and there's been some interesting things because a lot of their research has been impacted by COVID a lot. And so we have things like we have hypothetical DMPs. So <laughs> they've been told to plan as if they're going to have data, even though they're not, mm -hmm. which has been really interesting. Well, it's very interesting. I wouldn't even think of that. Um, I don't know what there'll be more of that. Yeah, well, we don't know how long this will go for. So. No, and of course, it, it will organise, um, it, it will reorganise everybody's year. So people mm. people are struggling to get lab time. So people will be talking about their data. They'll be doing a lot more before they get their data or getting their data early and then having to do. Um, uh, how, how big is your RDM team? Uh, mm -hmm. We have a manager, Rosie. Um, we have uh, two two people at me, my level, me and Helen, um, and um, we do um, everything. We do um, we do the all the DMPs, we do all the training and we do the, um, we, we manage the, the fig share repository as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, it, it was strange how little Kirsten, it was strange how little difference going online made. <laughs> um, we've been led to expect at the beginning when we first started the workshops that we would get and my experience at other institutions was that you um, 
you got 50% attendance. So we were a little bit taken aback by the fact that we, we ran a session uh, for 30 people and everybody came. This was why we ended up having two people at every session and you know why they ended up being big and lively. Uh, and then when we went online, we heard from the faculties that attendance was, was quite low for online sessions. So again, we were rather surprised by the fact that we got you know, between 20 and 30 people. And again, they were very, um, it, it was just seamless. We, we didn't really get a lot of, it wasn't a big difference really. I know it sounds stupid. We'd, I'd expected it to make a difference, but it didn't. No, I, I feel like work has been much busier since March, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. uh, we don't insist on, do do imply, apply a DMP review service. We don't insist on we insist on there being a DMP at um, confirmation review, but we don't count them. Um, we don't insist on it happening through DMP online and we don't insist on looking at them. But anybody who asks to have their DMP reviewed in whatever format it is, whether it's in pa on paper or in a, uh, in a, in a PDF or in a, through DMP online, we do review it for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rosie. Um, yes, think we, yes, we did have a bigger. We have had a bigger uptake for advocacy activities online than we had for in-person sessions, um, mm -hmm. and our um, our one-to-one -one support has been popular since people um, si since people have been working from home. Yeah. Uh, I think the fact that we've been here the same as ever has come mm -hmm. across really, really effectively. Yeah, it's probably even easier to attend these sessions yeah, when you yeah. need to run around the building. So, yes, and that's something that we weren't aware of was that we've had people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. We had one session where where they said, "Oh, can we move it?" Because a lot of the people have gone back to China, oh, uh, and it um, turned out to be at their bedtime. It turned out to be at ten o'clock at night. We couldn't move it because of the number of staff involved. Um, mm -hmm. But they all came anyway, which is lovely. Oh, wow. and, had, and somebody not said, I wouldn't have known they were in China. Well, that's great. Um, mm. um, it seems, I don't know whether there are any more comments or questions for Beth, um, but it seems um, Rosie's comment, just to echo what you were saying uh, about the uptake, is the last one. Oh, no, sorry, one more. Uh, and Kirsten, you had a big increase of users in November 2019. Was there a special reason? I think we did training at the end of October. We did two training sessions, two big training sessions in October, um, and a couple of um, faculty specific sessions. And a lot of people just went to the training and then went straight online. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that was the, that was our biggest rush of and of course there's two two times to to do training one is too early and the other is too late <laughs> you get people either before they've got their data or you get them um when they've already done it and they wish they knew it already but we thought if we got people quite early and we did do a lot of training then mm -hmm. so yes yeah the, tra the training was really valuable and it went really well yeah um Okay, brilliant. Um, thank you. Thank you for all the comments and uh, for Beth to answer all of your questions. I think we can just slowly uh, move with the session, but if you please, if you think of anything else, um, feel free to just pop your comment or question in the chat or just feel free to unmute yourself. Um, but we, we can just give you a few updates from the MP online. I don't know how many of you are aware that we launched uh, the demo sessions last month. Um, we were just running one demo session actually yesterday uh, showing the how to use conditional questions. And we are running um, another drop -in, sorry, demo session next month. Um, so I think, I don't know whether Patricia could just maybe share. We have an open agenda for everyone where you can see the link and yeah thank you patricia and also the recording from yesterday for those who missed uh, missed them these demo sessions are like basically very small trainings um a little bit 
more official than maybe these drop-in sessions. It's more of us talking, but we just want to ensure that some of the functionalities are explained and we talk about potential extensions there. Um, yeah, another thing. Oh, thank you, Patricia. I think I'm not an organizer for this meeting, so that's why I'm actually not able to share my screen. Or is this you, Bev, actually opening this? I don't know who has the permission now. Um, and next, okay, so I can share my screen now. Let me do this. We are celebrating 10 years of the NP Online and we had decided to run um, an anniversary week between 16 and 20th of November, um, where we'll be releasing a few blog posts um, and having also two calls uh, where we would like to welcome you. One will be on the 16th of November, um, where we will be discussing the original idea and we'll have some funders joining us on the day as well um, as some original members of the team. And then on the 20th of November, we'll be having a call in the afternoon because we would like our partners from the roadmap team to join us as well. So this is why we're trying to make it in two different time zones so uh, more of the world can join us. Um, and we'll be talking really about the future. We'll be having um, one of our speakers I can just think of from the top of my head will be Tomasz Miksha uh, from the uh, Machine Actionable RDA group. So um, you're more than welcome. Um, you're one of the first group. Um, just to know about exactly uh, the days and times so do join us and keep an eye on twitter because we'll be releasing like i said um several blog posts and after today or hopefully towards the end of the week i'll start advertising these days more on the social media as well um we um, have a September newsletter out as well. I think we can just share a link with you for those who are not subscribed just yet. And like always, um, we, we do have the September recording from last month, um, as well as the whole playlist on YouTube. I don't know, I can just open the space if you have any further questions for us or for our team or for Beth, feel free to either unmute yourself or write a comment. But if not, I'm, I'm not going to hold you here. Um, if you're not following us on social media, uh, definitely do so because this is normally the place where we advertise all of our online and demo sessions. And like I said, we'll be advertising there the um, anniversary week for November as well. And our next uh, drop-in meeting is going to be on the 24th of November, half past 10 as usual. And next month, our speaker will be Rosa Lund. Berg, uh, from KTH, um, Royal Institute of Technology from Sweden. I listed a few more drop-in sessions for you to see. Um, we currently have speakers confirmed till April, so if you want to put these as a placeholder to your calendar, feel free to do so. We are planning to have on the uh, DCC website also an even page for DMP online um, demo sessions and drop-ins, but um, it, we are currently working on this, so I'll be referring you in the future um, for something easier where you can see all the future plan events, but for now, um, at least you're able to see them here. But thank you very much, Beth, if no one has something else to say. Um, thank you for for presenting and telling us about the fantastic increase and how, how have you been using uh, DMP online and how your trainings were successful. Fantastic to thank to you. Hear. It's good to share. Good to share. Good to good to talk Absolutely. to everyone. Absolutely. Um and thanks to Patricia for helping me to take the notes and organize today. And we are very much looking forward to speak to you all next month. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks everyone. Bye.